you for all your grace, your mercy. Thank you for your goodness in our lives. Thank you for the reality of the Holy Spirit. The manifestation of Lord Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father. Let your will always be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Let your kingdom be glorified. Let the name of Jesus be lifted high. Let all be bowed to the one and only Lord and God and our Master, our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. We give you all glory, praise, and worship. In Jesus' name, everyone say, Amen. Well, the afternoon is a teaching session, and uh, we get this through. Okay. Praise God. Uh, welcome those of you first time here. <coughs> welcome each one of you. Amen. You're an uh, intercessor, and um, there are certain things in your family that you've been praying through that the Lord wants to bring through in your life. And you have a great love for the Lord. And just, you know, shine up to the Lord before the Lord. Amen. Praise God. We've done more. But, um, <clears throat> welcome everyone. And um, in terms of uh, this afternoon session, and I want to allow you all to direct the uh, flow of teaching, especially if it's an area that is an inquiry. Um, and we are touch on those areas. So let's start um, seeing what areas of inquiry you all have or questions to answer. Uh, this is like a healing school. This is uh, our last uh, healing school today. Uh, last miracle service tonight that we do before we go to the regular service. Uh, and so in terms of those areas, but in the area of healing, uh, questions that you might have that you want to ask or direct an area uh, in which you can teach him, and so I will open to the floor. Amen. Praise God. So you don't have questions? I have questions for you. <laughs> Whichever way you are. Okay. Yes, Abraham. No more about how how you exercise faith for others. When you do that, what? Okay, Abraham asked a question. How do you exercise faith for others? And uh, what actually happens when you exercise faith for others? And, um, well, let's lay some basic foundation. Uh, we all know the words in Hebrews chapter 11. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 11. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it's obvious that um, it says, Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is, that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Now, let me first ask this question. What does it mean to please God? Okay, that verse is in the Bible. Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Okay. What does it mean to please God? What is it that God looks for that please Him? Yes, I'll say like that. Hey? Obedience. Are you talking about uh, an actual action? Uh, okay. Are we talking about action? Okay, so we're talking about two things. Uh, so Pastor Elijah says, uh, obedience pleases God, which means the condition of the heart and the actions that flow from that. Two areas that pleases God. Now we ask this question. Is one enough or do we need both? That means the state of being of the heart and the actions that pleases God. Are both necessary or is only one necessary? Both are necessary. 
Both are necessary. All agree. Yes. If you have the condition of your heart, will you actually protect that? Yes, of course. Yes. So everyone agree. We need both. Yeah. Okay. Now, since only God knows the heart, and God is the one who can truly see the heart, even prophets can be mistaken. As Samuel the prophet, when he went to anoint David, when he saw the other son, he saw this is the one. But God said, No, no, I've seen the heart. Elias' heart is not the same as David's heart. And so only God sees the heart. No doubt the heart is important. That one without doubt. But the fact is, you all agree that some sort of action, indication need to come forth that show that we please God. Which comes back to the fact of James. And James said something that in fact you know, Martin Luther, the Red reformer, never liked the book of James. He wished that it was not in the Bible. Because his strength was in justification by faith. And James said something that is almost contradictory to the revelation of his time. Turn to James, uh, book of James. And... Uh, <coughs> In the passage of James, that James on the four, uh, let's look at chapter two. James chapter two. And it says here, verse 18. Someone will say, You have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your work. I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Hey, that's funny, isn't it? <coughs> your faith will result in works. And works is an outward expression. Of course, we all know that the heart is important. It all flows from the heart. And uh, James does not clarify, but uh, let me finish reading first. It says, faith without works is dead. And it says, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Wow, yeah, yeah. So that's why, you know why Martin Luther does not like that. Justified by faith is justified by works. <laughs> and he's been working so hard, he sent that life to be justified, and now we're justified. And it says, by works, faith was made perfect. And so he say in verse 24, you see then a man is justified by works and not by faith only. Now we know what he means. What he means is faith resulting in corresponding actions that flows from the heart. That need to also be clarified with Ephesians chapter 2. Now we are answering that question, but we are answering the question very deeply. We are going to ask this question first. Ephesians chapter 2. That differentiate two types of works. Two types of works. Chapter 2 verse 8 is a verse familiar to all of us. And it says, <coughs> For by grace ye have been saved through faith, and then not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works. There you go, not of works. Lest anyone should boast. Of course, if you read Romans, it says that... Um, uh, if it's of works, then it's not of faith. If it's of faith, then it's not of works. You got contradictory statements like that in the book of Romans. <coughs> but all scriptures will harmonize with each other when you see the whole, whole picture. And it says here <coughs> in verse 9, None of works as anyone should boast. Verse 10, We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. Which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So there is a difference. There is a difference between the works that come from faith and the works that come from the works of the law, which is what Paul says in Romans chapter 8, uh, in the book of Romans. The works of the law are works that are produced from our own efforts. The works of faith are works that are energized by the Holy Spirit. One is born of the Spirit because it's the works of God. The other are the works of the flesh. And the two are totally different. Outwardly, they look the same. 
inwardly they are as different between day and night. So we differentiate that. So we have harmonized the book of James with the book of Romans. Understanding this pattern. But we come back to this conclusion. Faith has to result in the heart believing and the actions taken, energized by God. And at which point do we please God? At the point when works of faith is perfected. Like James said, when the faith that is in our heart energizes the works and we yield to the energy and produce the works, then it completes the whole process of faith. Faith sees, faith believes, faith sees, faith speaks, faith acts. That completes the whole panorama and cycle of faith. We all agree on that. So there is that whole <coughs> scenario. With that in mind, we look back at Hebrews chapter 11. <coughs> Hebrews 11. Hebrews chapter 11. And we know verse 6 that we have quoted. Without faith, it is impossible to please Him for He works. For he who comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Now, it says that we are to please Him. At which point do we please Him? Definitely with our heart, with our lips confessing, with our actions, with corresponding faith. The total package pleases Him. Then God says, faith is perfected. Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. It is finished when faith obtains its final result in our actions. And after all, life is active. Life is not passive. We do things. And the difference is, the problem is not in the doing. The problem is doing it in the strength of God. And the key is not cancelling the doing. The key is to keep doing, but doing it in the strength of God. Not doing it is a passive thing that God doesn't advocate. Even Paul says here, does not work, does not eat. And it implies that as long as there's life, there's movement, there's action. We need to make sure that the actions that we do come forth from the energizing of God, not from ourselves. And that's a big difference. So we are agreeable that pleasing God is something visible in the action, in its final form. And indeed, when you look at this roll call of faith, every one of those who have faith recorded here in chapter 11 did something. They didn't just believe. They did something. Noah built an ark. Abraham left and went to the promised land. And every one of them did something. Faith results in actions. As James advocated that faith without works is dead. The process is not complete. And that is actually what it means in verse uh, when it talks about how we please God. Look at verse 5. We write verse 6 just now. Hebrews. By faith I put it here so it go off the screen. It says by faith Noah being divinely warned of things not yet uh, but, oh, I read verse 7 let's read verse 5. By faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony. Now look at the word testimony. Testimony is believing, speaking, acting, and the whole package. We have a testimony. So he had this testimony that he pleased God. So there is some sort of action that pleases God. And it seems like God is looking for something. God is looking for the total package and say, okay, you have pleased me. 
Now sometimes it might take some time before we please God. Because God is testing us. God wants to see our obedience. Now we know some people displease God. King Saul. He didn't carry out God's uh, commandment. He displeased God. And then at other times, other people please God, like you have uh, Enoch. That means they did things that please God. And sometimes God never said anything. And uh, in a time of um, the uh, in a time of uh, the wilderness, and there was a time when uh, the Moabite uh, people were tempting the Israelites through the uh, advice of Balaam, and uh, all kinds of manner of sin was happening. And while the people were mourning because God's judgment was on His people for sinning with the Moabite people, and uh, Phinehas, who was one of the uh, Aaron's son, the priest, was so upset. In the midst of the morning, he saw a man took a Moabite woman to the tent. He took a spear and he killed both of them with one spear while they were doing some wrong things. And it pleased God. And God blessed him with what we call a covenant of peace. So some things we do do please God. Some actions that we do, because they're in line with God's perfect will, they are the things God himself would do. And a human does it, pleases God. So God is looking for those things. That is obtaining a good testimony. Now if you read the whole context of what faith is about, we know verse 1, the definition of faith. Faith is a substance of things, so for the evidence of things not seen. Don't forget verse 2. Verse 2 has not been emphasized. By it, the elders obtain a good testimony. That means they knew the process of faith and they know that they need to do things until God says, I am satisfied that you have obeyed me. I'm satisfied with your testimony. Now you might complain, no, why, should, why should God do that? Don't complain, because even Jesus has not do that. For 30, 30 years, Jesus was just doing what the Father wanted. It was not easy waiting on God. It was not easy abiding His time. But for 30 years, he prayed, he waited, he meditated. And until he was 30 years old, he went to the waters of baptism to John the Baptist, got baptized, and the father says, remember, he has done no miracle, he has preached no sermon. He hasn't started his ministry yet. Father says, this is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. 30 years you're pleasing God, so don't complain. We have to live a life that God looks and says, I'm very pleased with this life. Which is a life of obedience and action. And we are always pleasing the Father. Isn't that what Jesus did in his three years? He says, I do what the Father tells me. Amen. And that's all he does. Every day he sees, Father, what do you want to do? And he does whatever the Father does. No more, no less. Exactly what the Father wants. And he pleases the Father every day. The heart and the actions. So by it, the elders obtain a good testimony. And that's how he talks about Enoch having a good testimony. One needs to do something. Now, sometimes <coughs> we might not do it exactly the way God wants. God gives us a chance. Look at verse 4. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying has given that Though he being there, he still speaks. Now remember the story of Abel and Cain. Abel offered sacrifices pleasing to God. And God wanted Cain to have the same chance. Cain was so unhappy. Why, why, why didn't take my brother's sacrifice? Why didn't take mine? He should have learned from his brother. He should have done everything his brother did. And said, God, forgive me. I didn't know. Let me learn. In fact, God tried to advise him and says, If you do well, will you not be accepted? Implying, go and do well. Go and learn from your brother. Instead of learning, he got upset that his brother killed his brother. So God did give him a chance to amend his way, to change his sacrifice, and do exactly, if he had done exactly like, like Abel did, God would have accepted him. In fact, God warned him, sin is in your door. God told him, it's in danger of 
displeasing God. So everyone has an equal chance to do something that pleases God. And uh, see, we live in an age of grace. So much that there is a teaching on grace that people don't need to fast anymore, people don't need to do things anymore, you know. And they forgot one thing. Salvation is by grace. But rewards in heaven are based on your works. It's in the Bible, 1 Corinthians. Very clearly, God judge your works. Everyone is saved by grace. But you want rewards in heaven, you have to do works not of the law, not of your own strength but works that God has prepared for you to walk in. Works that God has designed and predestined for you to do. Works that is written in the books for us, like uh, the book of Psalms tells us that when we were born in Psalms 139, the, before our days were, it was written of them. So we have works in which we can please God. And we need to work, walk in those works. Now, in answer to the question, individually, we need obedience that result in corresponding action to please God. That's how we exercise faith internally. Remember, everything has to be energized by God. <coughs> now, <coughs> when it comes to we exercising faith for other people, it involves the will of God still. There is no way you could impose your personal will on another person's will without it being part of God's will. Amen. We're still limited by God's will. Mm. So that's the first limitation. Uh, if it's not God's will for something, no amount. Like slave parents trying to impose their will on their children to force them to go in a certain direction of their ambition or a calling or work that that they themselves do not have, but the parents impose, influence. That is imposing. And you might lead the child into something that the child never wanted to do their entire lives. And out of God's will. It is possible. We might influence people sometimes into something that God never asked them to do. So it's important, even as a pastor, when we counsel church members or sheep, the first thing I'm always looking at is, is this God's will? And that's always the number one thing. Because if it's not God's will, I need to be there to say, I don't think it's God's will for you. If it's God's will, then we encourage a person along the line. Because God's will is the most important thing in all our entire life. So we're limited by God's will. Number two, we're limited by the person's personal will. If the person does not want it, no amount of forcing can force a person. We need to respect a person's free will and free choice. Even if their free choice goes against God's will and is damaging to themselves. If God should allow mankind to choose a road that even opposes God, think about God our Father, set us an example. How much freedom must we give to people to allow them to freely choose. Of course, to a certain extent, if they are your children, they need guidance and all that. But I'm talking about adults to adults. God never sanctioned us robbing another person of their free will. No Christian dictatorship. No Christian slavery. We are only slaves of one master, Jesus of Nazareth. The pastor, the ministry, you know, some, some ministries are military style. If you go too long under the ministry, you begin to lose the exercise of your free will. You actually become weaker. Which is why I always tell people in our church, you know, you can go anywhere you want. You can go to any ministry, go anywhere, go and observe anything, learn. You got questions coming ask. We're not frightened of the ship going anywhere. Because we say only one thing, you're not sure anything, come and ask, we'll tell you. We only sometimes warn when we know, let's say if it's an antichrist, okay, that's an antichrist. Or if it's a false prophet, say, hey, that's a false prophet. And you still want to find for yourself, go by all means. You know, the free will of the people. Which is why we try to raise up a church where people think for themselves. Not a church where people stop thinking for themselves. 
uh, that's why in our church we ask, we tell people, if I ask you to jump, you should say, why should I jump? Well, you see, many churches say, if a pastor or a leader say jump, everybody, the only question you have to ask is how high? Those are for Sunday school kids who cannot exercise free will. And those are not training adults. Those are training kids. And the reason is, if really we ask you to jump and you ask why, and I cannot give you a good reason, then you try to contradict it. But if I can give you a good reason to jump, you know what happens? I don't have to tell you to jump anymore. You will know 20 benefits for jumping. And by the way, there are physical benefits for jumping. Number one, good for your limb glands. You know, they got this exercise thing that is a spring, you know, a little spring thing. And uh, uh, I, I didn't know the benefits of jumping myself. Although I, I would be someone with quite balance, it's pretty so in body, I do exercise and all that. And then I go to Jehuda's house, uh, at that time his name was Sam, and they say, hey, what's that? Do you exercise with the thing? I say, that's a very odd way to exercise, Sam. You know, uh, I don't see how it really benefits. And then Sam tells me, oh, he bought it because uh, they tell him that it was good for the lean glands. I say, lean glands? Huh, that's an area I never researched on. And I say, really? He says, really? And uh, then I say, okay, let me go back and do research. And I went back, I did my research, and found out that, uh, indeed, it helps the lean glands. Something I didn't know. See, you learn something all the time. And uh, then I found out that the human limb glands is based on movement of your body. And then I found out that you got two circulation going on in your body. One is your blood vessels where it pumps the blood out and then through the, arter through the arteries and come back through the vein. So there's a blood circulation through your body. I found out that there's another circulation and that is the limb nodes. And it's a transparent liquid. And I found out that it's, it's as extensive as blood vessels. There are limb gland vessels all over. I said, wow, that's something I didn't know. And uh, so it circulates through your whole body and it is your waste disposal system. I thought the blood itself was taking waste disposal. But then I realized it's only taking, you know, uh, the carbon dioxide. But there's a waste disposal system that's built into our body called your limb glands. And then I found out that small mammals, small mammals have two hearts. One heart pumps the blood, one heart pumps the limb. The limb gland. Pum, 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 pum. I said, wow. And then we big animals or mammals, we lost that. So how do the limb nodes uh, uh, circulate by the valve system? You know, the one-way valve system plus by our movement. Which means that if your body is not moving, your waste disposal system is not working. You know, like they invented a watch that powers my movement. I think it's a one Japanese watch. And uh, it, 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 it records and picks up all your movement and converts it to electricity. So you don't need solar power, you don't need battery. As long as you move, it recharges itself. But if you put the watch by itself and you forgot to take it, ah, it's, you need to recharge by movement. Your limb lens is that way. So can you imagine if you're lying down for seven days and didn't move? It is like the garbage disposal system broke down. I said, wow, I didn't know that. And I said, okay, jumping is good then. And uh, in the end, uh, Jehuda gave me one of those things. So if you see the Singapore house, you see there's one tiny place to jump. So, you know, I jump five minutes a day or sometimes if we got time, uh, five minutes, ten minutes a day. And now I realize, Ah, benefits of jumping. <laughs> now you know. Hallelujah. You see the difference when you know the reason and when you don't know the reason. The difference is, if you know the reason, no one needs to tell you to jump. You don't need a dictator or a commander or a captain to weave you and say, jump! Jump! No, you know the benefits. And that's what we are training. Training people to know. 
And you need to question and ask to know, to inquire to know. Which is why we encourage people to question. And uh, everything can be analyzed, everything can be asked so that we can know. And so based on, well this is a very long answer to Abraham's question. <laughs> and, um, and they talk about exercising faith to, to, for other people. There's a limitation on God's will, there's a limitation on personal free will. So we cannot impose our will on another person's will. <coughs> and <coughs> we also cannot impose our level of faith on another person's level of faith. That one you got scriptures. Romans chapter 14 and 1 Corinthians chapter 8. Remember Paul talked about eating idol food versus not eating idol food? Uh, Paul says that idol is nothing. For him, he eat idol food, no problem. You know, they can offer it to Satan, offer it to Apollyon, offer it to after 20 prayers and a one hour meditation, Paul would just pray, thank you for this food, bless it and enjoy the chicken. You know, there's no curse that's going to come upon him. And there's one missionary who the, in Africa, I think, and the witch doctor does all those things to him. And so some day, some days he look out the door and there's blood on the door. We were headless chicken on the door. So every day he would look and say, Thank you, God, for providing. It's the chicken. Because <laughs> <laughs> the witch doctor is wondering what happened, you know? So every day got free chicken. Hallelujah. <laughs> so that's nothing to him. Paul says an idol is nothing. But then he says, to those who believe that it is something, their faith level of faith. And in their presence, you don't want to stumble them. You come down to their level of faith. <coughs> Romans 14 says, some people observe one day to the Lord. Some observe every day to the Lord as a holy day. Some eat only vegetables, some eat meat and vegetables. And Paul says, they all do it unto the Lord. It says, let each one do according to their faith level. Mm. Can you see that? Third law, when you pray for someone, you must respect their level of faith. See, at my level of faith, uh, uh, even let's say my son, uh, who normally would not go to take my son, and he most of the time is very healthy, he's of course in the sports and skateboarding. So, when recently he was staying with me, he had a slight cold and fever. Uh, so for me, if I could, if it could, if you were trying to come, I just pray and meditate myself through. I don't take, I don't even take Panadol or anything. I just pray through. But he took Panadol. So I didn't kind of say, ah, ah, Jesus is here. I'm here. Those men of power for the hour. <laughs> I didn't say that. So when he takes one I say, you know, let me lay hands on you. God bless you and make you heal fast. And he was healed fast. But he took his spine off. His level of faith. I don't impose my level of faith on his level of faith. So I flow with his level and his comfort level and all those things. So it's important we respect levels of faith when we exercise faith for another person. So these are the internal dynamics that is happening. Uh, three limitations that we have. Outside of those limitations, when someone is under your covering, you can exercise faith over them. Let's say if I ask you for, to come with me on a missionary trip, I can exercise my faith over you because you come under my covering. And I say, as long as you are with me, you will find a degree of protection and help over your life. So my faith is like an umbrella, cover the person's faith. And there is a person comes and do the same thing I do alongside me. So there is a certain covering that we can exercise. And so uh, to that level. So whenever I'm praying for somebody else or exercising my faith, I need to consider these four areas. The fourth area is whether the person is it's possible for my faith to cover the person's faith. And to a certain extent, I, when my son lives with me, under the same roof, my faith does cover him to a certain extent. Everything will be accelerated. And I say those words to him. I said, do whatever you want, but everything will go very fast. Uh, so you exercise some level. 
of faith covering. Does that answer your question? So what happens spiritually if this science faith is like in the Bible when two men kind of put their friends down on the rooftop? Yeah. God is pleased. Yeah. God looks down. And because God looks at these four points, number one, it is his will. Uh, number two, the person's free will has been respected. Number three is according to the person's faith level. Do you know that that paralyzed man, he has to be conscious too, right? The one they left down the roof, he has to be conscious too. He has to be willing. You know, I'm sure none of you thought that. This, let's assume that there are four people who took him. That they went and grabbed an unwilling guy. <laughs> And he's kicking and screaming, he said, no, 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 no. And up the roof, he could hear commotion. Of course, he's paralyzed, so he can't do anything. <laughs> but he can scream. He thought, like, no, I don't want, I don't want. You know? And they dig a hole in the roof. And then he look at the hole, ah, no, 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 I don't want. No. He has to be willing. So he must have cooperated. He said, all right, I'm willing to go. And of course, you all know by now that that hole has to be pretty big, right? You don't expect that it's just a tiny little hole and then they put a noose around his neck and slowly let him down. <laughs> they have to put the entire bed down. So imagine, you know, there's a big hole. There's a dig and then they have to be on the four corners, slowly let him down. And then when he came down, Jesus saw their faith. So it was in line. He agreed. He believed. And... We do not know who initiated, whether he asked them, they asked him. But there was agreement among them. That Jesus, they want to come to Jesus. And for them, it was like a one-way street. I mean, he was not expecting for them to carry him back again. He knew he's going to get healed. This is Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, so when they let him down, he got healed. And that was it. So, the fourth level is... When they came into the presence of Jesus, with all those things, Jesus' faith now covers. Like an umbrella. They come into the atmosphere where He will release the healing. <coughs> Praise the Lord, that covers an area. Any other areas that we need to cover? Yes, Lance. Pastor, in, in, in James chapter 2, <coughs> when, uh, when James is speaking about faith and wonders, and he says, I'll show you my faith by my words. In, um, I think it's in, in, in verse 8. Um, where, yeah, in verse 8, he, he speaks about the royal law according to the scripture about loving. So, and then previously to that, it speaks about them sort of having some type of preference. So it looks, the scene is like there was some type of preference, and they forgot about treating people as they wanted to be treated, operating like the royal law of love. And they've gone into some mode of just, you know, just faith, 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 everything. And there's no practicality about like the basic stuff that needs to be done. And then gone off on some tension, just, you know, faith, believe, and this, etc. And then James says then, I'll show you my faith by my works. What's he referring to the part where he's still got everything to check in terms of, you know, loving the next person, making sure there's no impartiality going on? Yes, there is a context to that. And, uh, because James was ask, talking not just about healing, yeah. talking about good works. Yeah. Because there are a lot of people who uh, say they are in the faith uh, and they're walking with God. But James was actually into good works yeah. and uh, charitable works. Yeah. And he's saying that these people are not doing anything when they say that they have love but they don't have love. Yeah. Yeah. So you're right. There is a context to that. And not just particularly on healing or miracle that he's talking about. Yes? I've got a question. So, you know how in the handover, like, um, if someone doesn't want it, you know, as far as over superseding their will, how would you pray for somebody to, because you know, yes. whether it's healing or them coming to the Lord, how would you pray, you know, for that? Very good question. So if somebody actually exercised their free will and they, their lack of understanding or whatever system they have, they cannot accept that. The most powerful prayer we can pray for anyone is a prayer of Ephesians chapter 1. 
And in that prayer is a prayer uh, Paul prayed for the Ephesians that the Ephesians uh, will have their spiritual eyes open that they would know the hope of his calling the riches of his inheritance in the saints and the exceeding <coughs> greatness of his power towards them who believe. This is the most powerful prayer you can pray for your loved ones uh, for anyone who does not have the revelation of God. I pray that prayer for people who are anti-charismatic and seen them change and become charismatic without anyone doing anything. Their eyes will open. Uh, that is from chapter 1, verse 17, 18 onwards, uh, Ephesians. And I pray for uh, uh, people who are within family members. I pray for them to have the understanding of some of the revelation of things of God because it's too advanced for them. And I've seen them open up to it. And it's better than speaking. It's better than trying to uh, 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 argue with them or reason with them. But when you pray for them, and once their eyes are open, they themselves see it. And so we pray Ephesians chapter 1, the most powerful prayer that has been given to us in the Bible. Yes? Whenever you are talking about covering Now, as you all know, there are also laws in every land where you can be prosecuted for like not taking your children to vaccination, to all this stuff, anything. And if anything happens to them, you can be prosecuted by the state. I think America is like Australia. And uh, for negligence. And then you can also lose your child for that if there's a case that's against you. And uh, so uh, what, we, what we are looking at here is when faith connects, the natural world respond. So when we are exercising and praying, let's say for our children, and if it's not working within a certain time, we need the doctors to come in. Then we need to examine our own lives, why our faith is not connecting. Especially for children. So as long as our faith is connecting, it should affect them because they're under our covering. Correct. Yes, and if it's not connecting, there could be a thousand and one reasons. One reason could be strife in the home, disagreements between husband and wife. Then the Bible did say the prayers are not heard. Or unforgiveness, or different things, open doors. And then we, we go through the formula of faith, but the relationship with God has been affected. So something is not connecting. The key is to look for the connection. That is there. And then when I pray for my children, apply the basic principles of faith. Faith believes, faith sees, faith speaks, faith acts. So little kids, we can do it much easier. He says, do you believe that Jesus can touch you? Then they usually say yes. <laughs> then the next thing is, can you see, the, close your eyes and see the light of Jesus come on you? See, we are trying to get them to visualize. Can you s close your eyes and see His power come on you? Whatever way they can visualize. Easiest is a light. And, uh, and then, if you give them a little bit of visualization, and they can do it, then the next thing is, lead them in a prayer, which is getting them to confess. And then they will say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, and you know, thank you for touching me, thank you for touching me. So we bring them through the whole thing. And usually, before the fourth step of action, we could discern whether it has taken hold. When it has taken hold, if it's a fever, the fever will start coming down. If it's uh, some area of pain or other things, you could, they could themselves testify that, hey, mom, I'm getting better. And when that begins, then that is when you can get them to do the action part. And as you do the action part, faith completes and is connected. So when faith connects, then you don't need the doctors to come in. 
when it doesn't connect after half an hour of prayer an hour then we have to look why and in the meanwhile while we're searching the reasons why we're not connecting with god the doctors must come here so that's our balance yeah <coughs> this is good because if we just do a teaching we won't cover these very important areas in the exercise of faith in our own individual lives yes um, I have a question for you. Um, <coughs> there are ministers I know that, um, like angels and stuff, work with them on their healing, and they will do what they're seeing the angels and things are doing. Um, and I know you have a lot of supernatural things been reading some of your things. Is there anything that we can do to proactively engage with the kingdom of God working with us? Like, the spiritual world, an angel. Yes, yeah. <coughs> yes. The, the supernatural things of God. Yes, because we know all those things are available to us. We know there's more available. Yes. And so I'm just on a quest right now about just really connecting with with everything that God has. And so I just wanted to know, I hope this isn't out of no, no, line it's with fine. what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, you mean a group of people who are seeing yeah. visions all the time. Yeah. Yeah. With what some of your, I read some of your experiences and stuff, what you would say about that. Uh, yes, there's a way to connect. And uh, the most important thing is there are also laws to connecting with operating in a, I would call it anointing upon. When we operate the anointing upon, there are different laws that operate in. And uh, so, uh, whether it be through the medium of angels or an anointing upon, uh, the laws that operate connecting to the realm of the spirit uh, First, uh, these are the laws that operate when we want to connect and, and, and work with what we call the Kingdom of God. Uh, the spiritual world uh, imposing and bringing itself its influence upon this. And uh, the first, of course, is um, to be aware of all that is going on in the spiritual world. Now, a lack of awareness, a lack of understanding of what is happening in the spiritual world and what's going on then we are blur 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 plus blur blur equal double blur <laughs> blur square so and, uh, so it makes no difference we need to actually know what's going on in the spirit world and be able to uh, look into the spiritual world for that we have a formula that we're given to people as to see it in the spirit spiritual world and uh, the formula we have hey, you can type that in if you got you know uh, V0 equals to 1 over V what would that be? Vn square V0 equals yes. 1 over Vn square yes, okay, let me see, I still got it here um, ah, there we have it Oh, this one is the square root, okay. Let me do, ah, there it is. Put it down. This one. Okay, you see this one? Okay. V0 equal 1 over Vn squared. Is it my God? So, spiritual world has a formula. Yes. This talks about your ability to see into the spiritual realm. Okay? And uh, in proportion to how much... Uh, VO is your spiritual open vision. VN is your natural vision. And the more your natural vision is reduced, the more your spiritual vision is increased. Let's say if right now all of... Uh, uh, and you completely your full physical body is completely dead then of course your spiritual body is completely aware and you definitely see in the spiritual world that's the extreme and uh, which is why the 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 more you are you the more you are your natural senses are reduced the more your spiritual senses increase and you could also consciously train yourself in that dimension of course, this is based on a basic understanding that you are aware that your spirit man has five senses. 
equivalent to your five natural sense. Our physical body has five natural senses, but these natural senses are a parallel to our spirit man who has five spiritual senses. A spirit man has eyes to see, ears to hear, mouth to speak, nose to smell, and a mouth to taste, and a sense of touch. So all these spiritual senses are already there in our spirit man. It's a difference whether our awareness is of the natural or of the spiritual. So for the length of training, people do not move between the spiritual to the natural. <coughs> and so Point number one is to be able to switch into the spiritual. Even though I mentioned V0, vision, because vision is the most normal one, it could be hearing, it could be smelling, it could be sensing, it could be tasting. So it is to switch off. The more we switch off the natural sense, the more we become aware of the spiritual sense. Now this is a benefit. It tells you that right now we are just being overwhelmed with the natural senses. And we are receiving impressions from your spirit man. But because we are more aware of the natural sense, we are not filtering them differently. And sometimes we ignore sensations from the spirit realm. But the more we know how to reduce the natural, you will only be left with one and only one from the spiritual dimension. The only fear and concern you have is this. Is this for myself? Because you have an internal soul which you're wondering whether these are the echoes of your own thoughts that are producing it. Which is covered by another law. And this is the law that says these are laws of the spirit that I have discovered. And the spirit world is, is not lawless. You know the law of the spirit of life. There are many spiritual laws. And uh, it's a systematic world and not a world that's confused. <laughs> or subject to uh, wishy-washiness. The spirit world is more organized than the natural world. No, the natural world is very organized. Based on laws of electricity and physics and thermodynamics and everything else, the spiritual law is even more organized. We just need to discover those laws, flow with those laws. Now, there is this law of this understanding of impression that says that every impression and thought that is in us has a cause and has a source. There is no accident. It's either from your natural, from yourself, or from the spiritual. So once you could filter where it's from and its source, then you're more clear of what the spiritual world is telling you. So point one is to be aware of the spiritual world. And the awareness is important, which is why meditation on God's Word, that's why praying in the Spirit, or worship, or doing spiritual things is important, because they enhance your spiritual activity and spirit man, and reduces your natural man. Which is also why fasting and prayer help. Because fasting is denying something to your physical body. And it makes you more sensitized to the spiritual dimension. However, may I also mention this? When you enter into fasting and prayer extendedly, you will also find your own soul is more awakened. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Which is why some people fast and they get more irritated. <laughs> <laughs> and they feel less spiritual. And they say, why am I fasting and I feel more dirty and horrible? <laughs> so they stop fasting. They should fast through until their own soul is also conquered because your secondary awareness is your own soul and actually you were irritated all the time <laughs> you just didn't know it and when you fast then you became aware more your internal self and then suddenly it's there to confront to deal with to repent before God to realize that something is causing this Remember, everything has a cause and has a source. Every image has a source and has a cause. And once you realize that, then it is there. Now, one of the things people do is they close their eyes to shut out some of the stimuli from the physical world. Right? So, just for the sake of training, since this is a training teaching school, close your eyes for a moment. 
I just hang loose and hang free, like worshiping, and you know, singing, you know, whatever, you know, humming, you know, or finding the melody in your heart and the spirit, and try not to think of anything. And I know when you don't think of anything, something will still go through your mind. And uh, okay, your eyes closed, and then no, don't try to form any image. But let any image come by itself to you. Any image, any image. And you will strike the imagination first. And your imagination will see some things or conceive some things. Uh, right now, open your eyes. Now, tell me what are the images that you see. Okay, let's start from this side. Some volunteer. You might see nothing black, black, if you're like close away, but, but that's fine. Anybody saw anything? Yes, Chichi. You saw a bowl. A, bowl. a what? A bowl, like you know, like you see around the present. <coughs> a bowl. Yeah. A ribbon. A bowl. Yeah, a ribbon, yeah. That can wrap a present. Yeah. Now, let's examine Chichi. Okay. Every image has a source and a cause. We are not saying it's spiritual yet. It can come from her own soul. It can come from the spirit realm, but it is caused by something. It can be caused from the physical, from a latent memory. It can be caused from the soul. It can be something from the spirit. Now, what I am sensing at the moment, and that's where I'm helping, it has something to closer to the natural realm and the soul realm. Uh, have we been thinking about present? This morning, yeah. okay. So can you see the influence comes into that, and I'm thinking that it's not from something from the spirit. But you can see how powerful words are when you say and it's still vibrating on your inside. But the thing is, when you are more aware of what's happening on your inside then you're aware of the images that could be blocking you. Because as long as your soul images are strong, it also blocks. Remember, V0 equals a V over Vn squared. So as one increases, the other decreases. And it's inverse proportion ratio, like the law of gravity. And so that is still resonating on the inside. Now, isn't it that some of you you might have moved houses a uh, different place of, of stay, maybe for different house, different city. But sometimes in your dream, you're still in your old house. Mm -hmm. You know why? Your soul hasn't moved on even though your body has moved on. Mm -hmm. There's always a source and a cause. Right. Now, any images from here? Just like close our eyes. Yes. Yes. Um, a horse standing by a stream and it's drinking and then uh, a horse drinking by the stream, mm -hmm. and then it suddenly put its head up. It suddenly put its head up. Now, uh, this is where the spiritual connection is. You know, I need to <coughs> talk to the person and connect uh, to your spirit. What you saw is a dimension of the spirit, and uh, and I'm looking into your vision. <coughs> okay, is that a brownish colored? And there was light coming from behind it, so yes. it was like an outline. Like now you're seeing something, yeah. right? And there's a light coming from behind it. Uh, and what do you see? Flow, flow with the vision. Listening, the water was glistening. Listening, and the water is making some sounds. Can you hear the water sounds? Okay, trickling. And what else do you see? And if I, and it turned red, and I didn't understand why. 
Yes. I now, oops, I'm out of the screen in a moment. Sorry, folks, online. <laughs> I'm just in a camera to follow me. But um, they say when you open yourself to the spirit and you're seeing the horses, and that's where I'm talking about tapping on the spirit. Being aware of the spirit, flowing <coughs> with the spirit, I now. Um, and there's a reason why you see the horse. Everything has a source and a cause. And where the horse is drinking that. Now, uh, horses in the Bible, usually when they reveal themselves, they are uh, different. It depends on whether it's an empire or different things, but this is a personal thing. And there's a direction that is given to you, an impetus that is coming to you, uh, a spiritual energizing that you're going to have. And um, uh, this pain that you have in the back, uh, that the Lord is touching you and heal you. And uh, that the Lord confirms uh, His healing virtue on your life. And uh, this horse, if you look very carefully, uh, you see only one horse, is that? Are you looking around? That one horse? Yes. This horse is linked to you. And it's like you're going to be traveling in the spirit, a dimension of the spirit that is going to ride on this horse. And uh, it's like a spiritual dimension horse that is going to accelerate. You come to a time of acceleration uh, upon your life. And as I speak about this dimension, I'm also picking up uh, uh, your left area of your leg. There is something that moves from here to here on your knee area. Now, um, as I pick up in this area, I'm trying to figure out what it is, a sensation that I'm having. And um, so, uh, tell me anything that's happened to your leg. Um, about seven years ago, I fell and slipped and broke my left leg. Yes. And I have a pin and a rod yes. in my leg. All right. And uh, so now it's related to the horse that the Lord will touch you and heal you and you are not able to run like a horse or move like before. Your movements have been hindered. But the energizing is going to come to you as you're drinking of the waters of the Spirit of God. Yes. Would you stand and we'll pray over you. And Deborah, could you come and lay hands on her? Thank you. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, for your grace, your mercy. We thank you, Father, for all of your healing grace. You are the God, the healer, and in the presence of your spirit and your angels, Father God. We thank you for the presence of Fanuel and Raphael. These are the angels that we work with, with Gabriel and Michael and with the three spirit beings and they say that they can do a creative work father we ask for a special work in this physical body touch the leg and all the operation has taken place restore until she can walk and run and move freely because it is your gift and the working of your spirit Let's worship the Lord, everyone, as the Lord operates and does a work of healing. Give her new legs, new bones, new tissues, Father. We bless you, we worship Thank you for your presence. We worship you, Lord. Oh, 
Oh, oh, oh. 
Jesus. Thank you, my master. Thank you, O oh, our Father, yeah. for your gift, for your working on miracles, for your glory. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. The law of the Spirit is number one to know what's going on in the Spirit and to flow with it. And um, again, we cannot do anything except what the Father wants to do. Amen. So even when you move into the realm of the Spirit and you see things in the Spirit, as your natural vision diminishes and as you discern things from the Spirit, and if God doesn't do anything, just stay there, absorb His presence, and just keep on being aware. So that's the first law. Be more aware of what's happening in the Spirit. And when you're aware all the time, then you can move into the second law, which is when the, when the spiritual world manifests. And that's based on 1 Corinthians 12, uh, awareness of the Spirit is required for all of us anyway. Uh, that's, that's understood when you're born again. To always see the spiritual realm. If you need scripture for the first point, Second Corinthians chapter 4, the last verse. Paul said we see the things that are invisible, not the things that are visible. So they talks about constant awareness of the invisible, which is the spiritual world. If you need a scripture for the second point, First Corinthians 12 and John chapter 14. Uh, we cannot do anything until the spiritual world chooses to manifest. Manifest is the word phanero or phanizo. Uh, one is the word, one is the noun. Uh, and when it begins to make itself tangible, then you know that the spiritual world wants to do something through the angels, through the Holy Spirit, or just through a manifestation, the gift of the Spirit, or Jesus himself manifests. And sometimes he manifests and he does whatever and I flow with him. So just now when we were talking, talking, and we became aware of the spirit, the spirit manifests. That's how I knew what was happening in our life. And when the spirit manifests, we flow along. See, we are still servants. We are still born servants and born slaves. We can do nothing without Jesus. Amen. We can do nothing unless the Holy Spirit manifests. That's still the second law. We must learn to be obedient to that. If it doesn't manifest, then we do nothing. At least we think in worshiping. Number one is to see in the spiritual world, to be aware. Number two is when it manifests. Once it manifests, number three, understand what the manifestation is about. So we need to know what he wants to do. What is the manifestation about? Uh, when, you, when you understand what the manifestation is about, then you go to number four, you act on the manifestation. It still takes faith. You must trust what the Lord is doing in the spiritual and see in the spiritual. Then number four, you act on the manifestation. Uh, then when all things flow exactly one, two, three, the four you act on it, God seals the thing. So there is a sort of law of operating in the spiritual dimension. Praise the Lord. And, uh, just for interest on this side, anybody saw anything? Yes. <coughs> okay, you saw a person in a white robe, but I cannot see the face. You see, like glory, white robe. Yes. That flies came to you. Of course, that will be a direct dimension of the spirit. And, uh, don't worry about not seeing the rest. And the thing about seeing is don't worry about not seeing what you cannot see. But enjoy what you can see. Now, the thing about enjoying what you see is when you see it, some subconscious flow comes that direct you to see something else in the picture. 
were you drawn to anything? Background, hands, feet, or something? White robe shining, and were you able to see the hands? You cannot see the head and face. I can see the shape of the head, but something in the hand, I don't know. Okay, because I'm looking into your same vision, and I see something in the hands. Okay, now flow with it, and just enjoy it. Remember, when you are having downloads, these are the laws of the download. Your mind is not active, so your mind must shut down when you're having downloads. Just receive. After the download, when it's finished, then you can use your mind to analyze with the scriptures. So remember the switch between both modes. During download time, if you use your mind too much, start questioning, 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 or doubting, it will interrupt. So during download, it is just enjoyment. Rest and let it flow. After it has been received, you can analyze, and in fact, we need to analyze all downloads from the scriptures and all that. So, at the moment, just enjoy. And I'm seeing the, your vision, and I'm seeing something in the hands. Now, flow with it. Let your vision flow into something in the hands. And um, you can see something that the hand is holding something. And if you need to, it helps sometimes to sing in the spirit, to flow in a melody, or to worship the Lord. Sing in the area, tell them what she did, and I'm going to go to the moon. Sing in the area, but I'm going to go to the moon. something correct now this is a full vision uh, you seeing it from your personal angle I'm seeing your visions and you so the person has come to you and I see you like kneeling down you see yourself kneeling down yes. hey, you never say that but I saw you kneeling down I know I see you kneeling down and I see this person pass something to you and you took it and you absorb it. It is a gift that God just bless you. An impartation. So that's an impartation in the spirit. Uh, whatever it's gonna do, you know, it will come in the coming days as you absorb it. Praise the Lord. Good to interact with the realm of the spirit, isn't it? And good to be able to analyze and teach it without losing our rational mind. And uh, praise God. Yes, Deborah. What happens if she's alone at home and she sees something in the spirit? Just flow with it. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, the vision will still take place without interpretation. Then later when you record and then you can find out uh, and then can say, it, explain to me what happened. See, we can enjoy a lot of things without understanding yet. And the understanding will come later. So let's say she has it personally. What she has to do is just let the vision finish and uh, just continue to, to, to apply it and, and write it down and then meditate on it without understanding. And uh, then after some time, even without me, the Lord slowly gives an interpretation. 
and the interpretation comes later. Might be days later, sometimes years later. But as long as we record it, we have got it. We have received it. But no, no worries. All of them will come back. Yeah. Yes. You have a question, Cynthia? In regards to that, I have a few things that I want to recently. I have At this point, let me give Ephesians chapter 3. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 3, and it will help you all at this stage here. Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3, and um, we have here. In verse 14, Paul's second prayer. Ephesians has two prayers of Paul. First is Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17, 18 onwards. The second prayer is found in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 onwards. Where Paul prays and says, For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, the word comprehend is from the Greek word kata lambano. It actually means to receive to take or to receive. You can check any Greek concordance, any Greek analytical lexicon, any Greek New Testament dictionary, and it will tell you that its meaning is to take or to receive. And unfortunately, they still retain the old English word comprehend, which technically long ago means to take or receive. But our modern English has changed so much so that comprehend is a mental process of digesting or comprehension uh, of uh, uh, understanding of some things that we're trying to perceive. So our modern English has reduced the word comprehend to just uh, be a mental process of uh, uh, understanding and digesting something. But in the original root and Greek, it means to take or to receive. Now, may I put that verse and the full meaning in line and read it in verse 18 that you may be able to take or receive with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. The purpose of God in everything that He does is to give us more of Himself whether it be understanding, impartation, energizing, or comprehension, revelation, or different spirits, spirit of peace, love, and joy, glory, life, and power, or wisdom, or mercy, uh, whatever dimension is keep imparting to us, is so that more and more of God can come into us. But notice, the process takes place and it passes knowledge. The word passes knowledge means is beyond our comprehension, beyond our understanding, beyond our analysis. And what we just need to do is to understand what's happening. When you are having a download, a revelation or a vision, 
God is expanding your spirit, strengthening your spirit, and more of Christ is looking to come into you, a portion more. And in that process, He's making you more rooted and grounded in love. At the end of the day, it is all growing in love because God is love. At the end of the day, whatever God puts into our life will make us more like Him. And God is love. So, a greater portion of His love will come into your life and you will experience a greater rooting and grounding of love and you will experience the ability to take something. But the receiving and taking is without comprehension. That means without knowing. It says it passes knowledge, which is why I advise people, don't worry about interpreting, understanding. That might belong to a different sphere. Maybe someone who can interpret dreams and visions, or a later on will give you the spirit of wisdom to understand things. It does not matter. The matter is that you must receive it, take and receive it with, with something which passes knowledge, and let God's presence fill you more. That will be the result. Anything that God does comes with His presence. A greater portion of His presence. And let that greater portion of the presence fill you more. As it fills you more, and you absorb it, assimilate it, even without an interpreter, one day you will understand. This is the law of God. He comes into your life, expands your spirit, more presence comes in, puts more things into you beyond your understanding, then you have more of God and having expanded to be more of God, your soul also expands. And then the understanding comes. Understanding always comes after reception. We all don't understand fully everything about Christ when we first accept Him. We accept Him because it is very clear that is the way. And something witness in our life that is the truth. We didn't ask to understand everything before we accept Christ. We didn't ask to understand everything about tongues before we receive baptism in the Spirit. We didn't ask to understand everything. See, in the world, they try to understand before they receive. In the Kingdom of God, you receive, then later you understand. That is a law of Ephesians 3. It passes knowledge. Remember the word. It passes knowledge. Experience it first, later you understand. And it is almost like a guarantee that when you grow to the level, you will understand more. But the understanding has to catch up and it is always playing catch up with your spirit. So don't let your understanding hinder the growth of your spirit. Let your spirit just grow. And let the soul play catch up. Praise the Lord. Yes. Um, I have to share something because um, the sure. Lord gave me a verse last week and I didn't understand it. And now this makes it all very clear. Um, he said uh, it was the verse about um, how can you run with the horses if you can't walk with the footsteps. Wow. You had a verse that says, how can you run with the horses unless you walk with the foot soldiers? Powerful verse that rhymes with your vision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't understand it, but what, you know, that came out of like, you know, why would I, you know. Yes. It's a good, it's a good motivational Correct. Is it, why is the Lord sticking it saying that to you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and it all links to actually you physically being touched and healed and receiving a creative work God in your body. Amen. God is so good. Amen. Lance. Uh, I want to ask a question. This morning, I was laying down and my body felt like it was like, it was weak. But now that I think about it, it was like some type of, it's like strong stretch. Mm -hmm. And um, it was some images that I began to see. Like the one was like a world of And uh, obviously we had to come to church and, and the time had gone. And, and I stayed like that like for hours just to sort of, it was the leading just to like stay in that mode that something would happen. And then like the brothers say, hey, come on, get to go to church, etc. 
now getting back <coughs> into you know getting back into like a sense of state, getting back into a, getting back into a vision or into that same mode. You know, like after maybe a day's event had taken place, but it, it appeared like it was how can I say it? it was like my body had to be brought down to a certain place before that could have happened. Now going back, you know, into that type of the trans vision, you know, how how does one sort of Yeah, back right again. Does it have to be like similar, the same or not exactly. But whatever God wants to do, as long as inside you you still want it, yeah. you can get back to the same thing. And there has been cases where people, some people have gone into the spirit and the angels speaking some things to them because time in the spiritual realm is different from time down here. Yeah. And the angels speak and then because of certain work thing, the person got pulled back. Yes. Yeah. And then the angel was in a certain place in heaven uh, and, and talking. And then the person got pulled back. Then later on, the person's work involved a few days. And then the person pray and go back in the spirit and went back is the exact same place and it continued as if there was no interruption. But on earth there were two, three days passed. You can't always get back to the same place in the spirit, except a part of your spirit sort of hold it there. Alright. Like a pause button press. Where you come back to the earth, do the early thing and then get back. Because it's sometimes it's very like you know, wait. Not waking up in the morning, maybe you laugh. And then something happened like early hours in the morning, and then the wife like comes and says, hey, you need to get up. And um, the wife's time, like, like, like that happened. Is that how your wife always wake you up in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was like some activity outside, so uh, something happened, so she's, you know. Okay. And when we met in Cape Town, um, I discussed with you, and, and you mentioned like growing uh, spiritually, you must stay like in the mode of worship. Yes. And it was like at that time, uh, when the Lord like you know took me to the intermediate realm, it was like a, a group of people that came and they started worshiping, and there was like some activation that was like taking place in it, and then I got like the awakening, like hey, go to the door, somebody's knocking me downstairs, and I thought ah, Mister, <laughs> and like the wife like come on, <laughs> you just pull me out of the spirit, <laughs> yeah, so. So what you're saying is that you can go back to it exactly. You can always go. <laughs> See, you know, never tell me that I told her. You can you know, always go back to the spirit. <laughs> yeah. And when you're talking, I, I went into your vision. I saw the wheel wind. I saw you there. And I remember, and the Lord says, so remember the time when you were like taken out of the body a bit, but like you got a bit frightened and you came back? Was there such a time? There's been several like those experiences where like you're coming out of your body. I would go past that then it would be like it was happening quite a while and it's like I'm saying, hey, this is not heaven. And then after a while I got like, like I'm not I'm not going further. Then I just like stopped and I said, no, I don't know. Ah, Okay. That's what happened. That's what the real whirlwind is for. Wow. To bring you further. Mm-hmm. Wow. So the next thing you get out of your body experience, you enter the whirlwind. It will just bring you higher. And the earlier times, <laughs> the earlier times was a lot getting you used to coming out of your body. Not everybody is used to coming out of their body experience. It can be frightening, frightening, because uh, they're so used to their body and being out of. But let's say if anyone you is taken right now into the spirit world, and your and your angel is there, of course. And you just left that. Yeah. Where will you go? What will you do? Are you familiar with the area? Okay. For me, I'm familiar with most parts of the spiritual world. So I would know exactly where to go, what direction to go. But most people have never been there. It's like landing in a strange country. Yeah, exactly. Everything looks strange. Yeah. And they don't know where to go, what to do. And they are lost. They will probably cling to the hand of the angel. Don't let me. <laughs> but yet there is heaven. They just gone to heaven and they're so frightened. Now, Pastor, in, the, in like the intermediate realm, would be like, what happened was that the Lord showed me like Hebrews 13, 20, and then I meditated on like the God of peace, like all the places in the Bible. And I wished to go and I would lay like that. And it was like a spiritual countdown, like, and then, boom. It, it was like you, like, tore in a place. 
like that, say when you wait in and you see, hey, there's people sitting in the house, <coughs> sitting in the night, in some of busy, they doing some type of work, is this. And they continued happening like that. Well, I would just put my head down and then it would happen. But it was like, you know, like the same places all all the time, all the time. And then you came the air, you move it, you wait. And then I'm like, hey, but Lord, what about heaven? You know? <laughs> you know it's like, then it was like, you know, some then you speak about it, it's like, oh, if I want to die now, I'm coming yet yeah, to this place. You know? <laughs> like all those thoughts like like sort of like pop up and then it was then the one day I had not, I went to the word at all and I said, ah, you know, I was disappointed. And then I went to lay down. Then the Lord took me to a place and then I saw some faces. I don't know if it was angels, but they were all suspended in the air. And then somebody, like a voice in Afrikaans, it's, it's like one of our languages, began singing in like that language. I love you, I love you, I love you. But it was a beautiful, like, symphony type of thing. And this just kept on happening. Kept on happening, kept on happening, kept on happening. But it was... Always in that realm. Yeah, like the one time I saw myself walking in the place, but I was I was out of my body, but I was watching myself. It was like a vision. Then I'm walking in this like institution. It looks like uh, some type of like financial institution, and I'm walking with some people, and it appeared that I was going to discuss some things like with regard to wealth. And I'm saying, Ish, I don't understand, you know, like what's going on here because it's I have them, and then they. And I'm saying, but I want to go to the throne, I want to go to the throne. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Eventually it was like, ah. It's stuck on the outskirts of heaven. It looks like that. You know? <laughs> then, I, then I'm just like, so, then I'm so disappointed, I'm saying, ah, give me a Then after a while, then when I speak to some brethren, they say, Ish, hey, I wish I could go there. Now when I go back, I say, hey, the God of peace, the God of peace, nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> you have been meditating on peace all the time, right? A lot, a lot. Okay, let me tell you why. The, there are seven layers of heaven. Of course, within each got many layers. So that's why some people think there are more layers. But there are seven layers. The first layer is peace. Second layer is love. Third heaven is actually glory. Fourth heaven is power. Fifth heaven is life. Sixth heaven is wisdom. Seventh heaven is mercy. And then that's where the throne room is. So you got what you meditated. <laughs> <laughs> so now increase your meditation. I would I would say have a visit to third heaven, the one where Paul go to. So meditate on joy and glory and keep meditating. You will be pulled to that realm and you will encounter a lot of saints there. Yeah. Stay there for a moment, encounter them before you go to the higher realm. But what you got what you meditated. So you keep meditating on peace, that's all you will see. Because that's what God was answering your cry. And you only went to first heaven. Third heaven is glory. So change the meditation and you will go higher. Yeah. Amen. Thanks, and then one last question, one last question. Yes. Uh, like, it was a, a name of, a, of an angel that was like uh, revealed. Then I was like speaking to you know, and he said, hey, pray with us. I said, hey, I can pray with Then he said, just pray that you, you know, for the energizing and the strength of the angel. And I did that, and the Lord took me out like my body again, but this time he took me back to somebody's house, like to minister. So when I came in the house, it was like, they didn't know I was there, but then when I approached like individuals personally, and I put my hands on them, then, then they began to like fall. Like, you know, one fell, then another one came. Then it was like some type of happening in the house where they would run out and call people, and then others would come in, and then the same thing would happen. Then I walked to this guy, he just stood like this. <laughs> and then I, was, I walked to him, and I did that, and he just stood like this, he kept on standing. Then I came back, boom, into, into like my body. What would that be? Some people's spirit are resistant. What you see is the spirit of people, and you should flow with that. When a person is in a kind of stance, it means don't minister to him. You only minister to those whose spirit are open. Yes. And in the spirit, you can see which spirit is open, which is closed. Those who are closed, just as in the book of Acts chapter 16, when God sent Paul to preach the gospel, he was not, not sent, he wanted to go to Britannia and Mysia, but he says the Holy Spirit forbade him. 
forbade him because those regions were not ready yet. Instead, he ended up in uh, Philippi. When he went to Troas, he had a vision of the uh, Macedonian man. Then he went to Philippi. So we only go in a spirit and we only minister to spirits that are open. And you can actually see people's spirit. Sometimes you can see their spirit yeah. like that. They're not open. Wait until their spirit open. And that is when the work of the Holy Spirit is. Chichi. Yeah, you went in the spirit. Yes. Yes. So why why did he see me? Uh, not everybody is open to certain frequencies. Some people can see, some people cannot. I visit all my members usually in the spirit. Some know, some don't know. <laughs> okay, so uh, when I went to the house, I was just looking around and looking at the picture. I didn't know what I was doing there, and then they came. Usually it's prayer and blessing. Oh, okay. Yeah, intercession, prayer or blessing. Okay. Yeah, strengthening their lives. Okay. Yes. Um, there's one, uh, one in the and I, I saw myself uh, up and then I see people are praying. So, and, and that's all. So what is the purpose of that? Oh, uh, that's to get you used to the dimension of the spirit. If ever you have an out of body experience like that, where you're above and looking, is to get you used to that for a while. Because we humans need acclimatization to the spirit world. And once you're used to that for a while, and then it becomes more and more often, and it's automatic for you to, to come out from your body and look out, uh, then they can bring you further after that. And the next thing that you'll be aware of is your angel. Your guardian angel will always be beside you during those experiences. And so at first you're only aware of yourself. Then later when you become aware of your angels and the angels around, then you can go the next step. So the first step is to be self-aware of your spirit coming out of your body. There are many, many stages of awareness in the spirit world. Then another step is I, I, I was moving very fast in the speed. You were only aware of the movement, but you didn't know where you went. Yeah, I don't know where I went. <coughs> it is also getting you used to movement in the spirit. These are all training acclimatization. Uh, it takes some time for you to get used to it. And whenever you are in the spirit or taken out, learn the next level, which is become aware of your guardian angel. Become aware of your guardian angel. Even if they're behind you, you cannot see them, whatever. Once you're aware of them, their energy helps to direct where and what you should be doing and going. Yes? Um, last night, I, I purposed to meditate on John 14, 15, and 16. When I arrived through, I was just, I decided I won't sleep. I will go to my knees and I just read and meditate. And I will fall asleep on my knees and walk up again and I realize These few days, uh, and These I, few days? No, yesterday. Oh, yesterday, very good. Like yes. yes. And then uh, at the end, uh, I, I feel I said, I meditate on how the, the vision, how the reason to get Jesus the vision is yes. so to us. And I meditate on that. And I remember around 5 in the morning, uh, I close, I went to my bed and stay up and I went to sleep. And uh, the only color I could see was paper. Uh, I could see paper in my eyes. And I said, Father, I said, Lord, what do you mean by this color? Why, what are you showing me in this color? The purplish color is usually close to the throne room, purplish blue. It's not fully purple, it's purplish blue. Yeah. And it's close to the throne room, where the 24 elders are. The 24 elders and all these are purplish blue, with hints of red. So you are at that red, with all the price that you pay. Yes. Martin has a question. <coughs> 
Standing up in physical or in the spirit? No, just physically. What what would happen? I've never had one of these travels, which seemed really interesting. Oh, you're standing I, up. I volunteered for that. <laughs> you're standing up yeah. and your spirit comes up. What, what does the body do? <coughs> oh, the body goes into sus suspended state or animation. It just stands there. Yeah, it stands there. And what do other people see? Other people just see your body. Yeah. Now, it depends. There are two stages. There's a stage where it can be in a trance. And in a trance, it's close, closer to a suspended state of animation. Or like right now, when I'm talking to you, I can be in the spirit and switch into the spiritual dimension and become aware of the spirit. My body and my soul is controlling my body, parts of it, but my spirit is somewhere else. Kind of thing. So you can have a dual consciousness. Which is different from a trance. Right. A trance is a singular consciousness, and the body loses consciousness, and all the consciousness absorb in the spirit. A dual consciousness is through training, where my body can be here. Like remember on the last Saturday when uh, we had that uh, red lobster. After red lobster, you remember we all came over here and sat on that table. Yeah. And then I was telling you all what happened in the spirit. You saw my hands still moving. I was telling you all, right now I'm going to take you into the spirit realm. And then I take all of you and all of you. I describe what you all were doing in the spirit realm. I describe how step by step I was traveling in the spirit. What I'm seeing. And you see my physical body action. But all my consciousness is directed there. And I describe some of you what you were doing, where you're going, what you're doing. And I took you all the way to the... Uh, uh, to the sea of glass and take you all behind the area next to my mansion where most of you were gathered and teaching and I discussed some of the things happened and I remember calling I discussed some things that happened to you and all those things plus there came a prophecy for you so and then the reason I discussed that is to tell you that what we are doing is not imagination it's real so we came back with some prophecies about what you will have and you receive something there and what you will see when you go back this is the people you will meet, so you will know that that experience is real. Mm. So you see, sometimes dinner experience not too bad. Eh? Ah. Yeah. And it's not, not because we have too many crabs on the red lobster. <laughs> right. But that's real. Wait, there's one coming from Enoch. Uh, so can I ask something about uh, the cube? The cube? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, because uh, I had a strange experience in some few months back, back at home. Yeah. So I was I was teaching in church uh, during the service. So what was in the process of teaching, I went into a vision. But it was like when I went in, I went, I came in from the door from the east. Yes. Okay. So when I came in, it was from the east, and there were <coughs> six doors that were open there. So yes. I had six, five, I had seven keys. So when I looked, I could see from behind that it was the Old Testament realm. But all those doors were open, <coughs> and, but there were angels standing on those six doors. Okay. So, in in inside, I had the impression that those those keys are access access into those the cube. Yeah. Those, those those. But what what I kept asking myself even after the vision was where was the seventh place because I saw six doors, seven keys, but the other seven I didn't see the seventh uh, seven doors. So within the cube. Where is the seventh plane? Ah, you're interested in the seventh plane. Because you saw the six planes. I saw cube. six planes, yes. Sir. Okay. But couldn't see the seven, but there were six keys. The seven is the key above the key. The one that goes to, uh, remember in the cube, the top one yes, is, uh, is uh, a father. Yes. Uh, there are keys. There's another level of key. There are two layers of the father. So the throne room. The one is inside. Yes. Inside the father. So you've got to go through the father to see the other. Oh. 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 
<laughs> so, uh, uh, I, your, your fashion of your pants, is it due to you being on your knees all the time praying? <laughs> you really were a man on your knees praying. You wear out your knees. <laughs> Okay, there is a question coming from the back. Yes. So, uh, we have Martin's question, yes. 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 Vision is correct. Yes. Right now, I'm not here. <laughs> I'm not here. Yeah, only my soul is here. My spirit is not here. Yeah. Because I can be conscious of that side. My spirit is conscious of that side. What's happening? Chichi. Yes. How do you pray in touch with out of the body? Yeah, but like, if you have this, like, what are you actually saying? Oh, once you're out of the body, your tongues is your conversational language. I speak to the angels in tongues and I understand what they say when they reply back. So, it's all conversations in tongues or talks. But is it not in, in English? No, it's not in English. Nothing is in English there. And then, and secondly, because we're talking about being aware of the um, angel or the angel, um, and what are the situations when if you're getting you and then you're out, and then you know they're there, but they are hiding, like they're hidden from you, and you're like, I, I, can you, can I see you please, and they don't come out, they just... Oh, so you're begging for them to be sure of yourself. <laughs> sure, I said, okay, they, they cannot. They have to obey the directions of the Father. And remember how yesterday I taught on Luke 24 that, um, that um, the, even our Lord Jesus did not want to show himself to the two disciples on the way he made And only when they pressed him to stay, then he revealed himself to the Lord's Supper. Mm. That he broke bread, then he knew. Mainly because uh, he wanted them to grow in a different way. See, not all growth is through visions. Some growth had to come from study. And those are different muscles. Otherwise, you know, remember I described you know, the crab with one arm bigger than the other? And the crab with one arm bigger than the other can never walk straight. Because this one is heavy. He has to walk sideways. And so, all the muscles in our body need to grow properly. So can you imagine if all you want to see visions? Imagine if your two eyeballs is the size of your head. So you're, you will always be walking like that. Because you didn't in, develop the backbone to carry the weight. So the, the, the head is so heavy. So it has to go to the side this way or this way, correct? If the head is too heavy and you'll be bent. So let's say you're bent forward, even though you got eyes, you still can't see because you only see in the ground. So you need to develop a backbone, as strong to carry your head that develops. Everything must develop proportionally. So maybe the backbone one has to be developed through studying the word. So sometimes Jesus doesn't want to, us to grow just by one method. And encountering angels and working angels is only one of the masters. We must develop other muscles, otherwise we become over-dependent on the angel. Everything angel, everything angel, everything angel. At one time during the time when angels were favorite revelation, after the Angels of Simon book went forth, uh, it was a good book, and uh, everyone started telling angels what to do. So it became overboard, and they got no more initiative, no more leading in the spirit. Every truth must be balanced. And it is there to develop certain things. Like even though I'm aware of uh, my angels standing around me all the time and I know their name and their voices, I'm not dependent on them every day. 
I still study the word, I still talk to the Father, you know, and I still worship, I still try to hear the voice of the Father. Sometimes they speak, I don't even tell them to speak, I don't even tell them to be aware. So it's important to develop all muscles. Mm -hmm. Ju has a, has a question? I was going to ask, what percentage of time do you think you spend with your spirit somewhere else? What percentage? Uh, okay, I would say a hundred percent impossible, and we only come back to do whatever work we need to do, where we need our full concentration. Uh, and so, uh, we do Ephesians chapter two, seated in the heavenly places. That is our home. The earth here is only a place we do some work. So sometimes physical things or things logistic like, like I got tons of things to finish up in Australia before I can fully move here. A logistic things, you know, and company things, registration things and all that. That must be finished and then things do and all, all those things arranged. So they're logistics, but they need to be done. And they're part of our stewardship on earth. And so uh, we only do those things, but we do with one one eye and one ear up to heaven. But we do need to come down and do things uh, on earth and be conscious of. But all the time over there. Your hand was raised up just now. What day is this? 13th. 13th. Okay, today is the 15th, so two nights ago. And the second picture is a group like Monty. <coughs> look, the man look like Monty, but I'm not sure if it's him. The man look like Monty. Oh. But Martin is not fat, it's just nice. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, it's the second man. <laughs> okay. Oh, the first man was, 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 you don't know. Okay. A plate with bread. And they get a quite high and he go to open the door and he turn he turn back like we are standing in the room outside of him. So he turns back to the ship and he's Ah, uh, that is uh on the thirteenth night you will have received some deposit and impartation. So that vision is about him receiving impartation. Yes. Uh -huh. And the day when you were spread for? The vision of me and Nancy ministering together? Uh, no. He saw you having a plate of things. And uh, then you were shaking hands or something. So uh, that day it was on the 13th. So he said on the 13th night you received a tremendous impartation uh, into your life. Now I don't quite remember what happened at 13 because for me the days just pass like that and all I'm aware is uh, each day, okay, what am I supposed to do in this period? I will go back to recall what, what happened on this day. Uh, well, just now uh, that I can ask the question. Uh, just one time, you know, I'm, I'm still so dull. I'm, I'm wondering what y'all are seeing and my mouth is watering. And I want to get into that because I'm a natural explorer. Probably most of most of you. Remember, V O equals a one over V N squared. Right, that is. So reduce the natural. And the other side will automatically increase. Yes, sir. Yes. The last time we were in Israel, when we were staying at the. Uh, Holy Land Hotel, I think that was the name or something like that. Yeah. Um, I was I, I, I was picking up and uh, whilst in the air, I, it was like the map of Israel was presented to me and I was seeing the map and seeing corners that I don't even know and all that. <coughs> what would that mean? Because I've been trying to understand that. Ah, uh, that means that 
you are going to visit Israel at some point. <laughs> that talks about some point in the future, where probably you and the team traveling, and perhaps when we establish COG in uh, Galilee. Okay. Uh, because there will be a COG so branch here. Yeah. Our COG branch will be in Galilee. It's yeah. a beautiful place. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, 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 Jerusalem is not bad, but Galilee is the best. Where we have all the yeah, the Mount Olives is good, but you know, Galilee is still the place. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, Cynthia. Um, I have a question. Why are we given a new name? What? Oh, why are we given a new name? Oh, why are we given The new name, remember when Adam named the animals? And uh, the animals, be, uh, <laughs> the name of the animal and the animal's nature are the same. Even though we all have been given names by our early fathers or we have adopted names or chosen names and changed our names, calling yourself by a certain name imparts a quality on you. Sometimes the quality is in you but you never took your name. Like uh, when I added the name Peter into my, my name, uh, I only had Chinese names in the early days. I began to take the quality of the Apostle Peter. But in character, I was more like John. So I've never taken the name John, but people always say that, you know, I'm more like, I'm more like a Paul than a Peter. But it was necessary to take the name Peter. Uh, and I knew now why, because um, uh, like Peter was the leader of all the twelve, and I was supposed to be the leader. Uh, even though my nature was more like uh, Paul. Then when I took on the name John, which is Johan, uh, then it became fit to me more my character and it sort of enhances things. Now you watch very carefully. People of the same name do take on a certain character. Now, if your name is Mary, anyone down there or the Mary, you would have a certain Mary or hey by the way, Mary Ann is a, also from the root of Mary. The Greek word is Maria, Mary Ann. Mary and all that. Now, the name Mary carries a sense of, um, uh, although there's a sense of a prayerful woman, a godly woman, there's a sense also of melancholy and the touch of suffering and bitterness. So most Mary carry with them that. And you call yourself Mary long enough, you have a sense of that. And uh, let me get another name. Uh, most people, okay, now you're wondering your names, right? Mm -hmm. So most people who are called by the name uh, uh, Paul, okay? They have a quality of wanting to be very ambitious. Check every Paul that you know in your life, okay? Uh, the name imparts something and you it quickens certain DNA. Most people with the name John or Johan or whatever tends to be more on the quiet side, artistic side, uh, more of feeling side, a uh, more compassionate side, and uh, maybe even musical side. And uh, let me find a name that is more uh, Jacob. <laughs> okay. ja a name Jacob puts in you a quality of struggling. Which is why we change it to Elijah. Elijah. Because when you were Jacob, it's always like you're struggling. Always a struggle. You're calling it on yourself. And of course, <laughs> and of course, a supplanter is a word. And, uh, and of course, uh, in some Asian places, they name the child wrongly, really not a good name. And we are, wise people change the name. Uh, so it doesn't matter your name in African or any language. The meaning of the name is very important. And that is why in the end, God gave us a new name. Because that name is the complete, real, full name of who we really are. And that's why God has to call us by our new name. In order to bring out Everything that He created in us. My, new, my name in heaven had 12 syllables. 
long name. Long name. It covers all the twelve fruit of the tree of life. Yes. Each word is from one of those three. So, so sir, uh, the, the, fruit, the fruit of life, does each individual tree have twelve fruits? Or does uh, are they one fruit in each of the twelve fruits? I remember I did ask that question. And where is Ben? Ben was waiting for the answer from my last trip in US. When he was sending me, I said, hey, I didn't answer the question yet. That was the question. <laughs> <laughs> and I never answered the question. Because, because, uh, in a, uh, because. Uh, that is from Revelation chapter 21. Yes, I'm asking this because there's something strange I, I, that made me, that puzzled my mind when I read that. Because in vision, I actually saw 12 trees. Yes, there are 12 trees. There are 12 trees. Yes, there are 12 trees. But never, 12 on each side. Yes, 12 on each But I never saw the 12 fruits, different fruits on each tree. So that's why I, I was like, is it 12 fruits on each tree or one type kind of fruit on each of the 12? So today we should answer that question, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's look at the book of Revelations. Okay. Revelations. Chapter 22, actually. Revelation chapter 22, and there you have verse 2. <coughs> In the middle of his street, on either side of the river, was a tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. You already got your answer. Very easy, your answer. <laughs> But you, you, you know what kind of boggled my mind, sir, was that it says was the tree of life. You never said cheese of life. So never. It's the it, same root. The it, root all are the same. Because in vision, it's twelve like, branches that look like twelve trees. trees. Yes. And the river is not water. The yeah. river is literally the life of God flowing. Yeah. It's not H2O. Yeah. It doesn't look like water, sir. Yeah. It looks crystal, crystal like because it has some glistening, bright glistening that flows yes. Isn't it interesting? The river is a river of life. The tree is a tree of life. So here's my other question since I answered the other one. What's the difference between the tree, the tree of life and the river of life? Is there, is there a difference? Should there be? <laughs> um, uh, but, but, but Pastor? Yes. Doesn't tree represent something else? Yes. So um, would that mean that even though it's a river of life, it branches into um, maybe other um, presentations or manifestations of the life of God? The life of God. Yes. Yes, Martin. Um, the, uh, the trees life and have fruit and that tree is for importation according to what you said, right? Yes. And the water goes just where they get the nutrients are. Uh, for those trees. Well, the water comes from God. Mm. It does represent the Holy Spirit, sir. The Holy Spirit also represented as a seventh spirit. Like seven spirits. So and one of the spirits is the spirit of life. So you say, okay, where's the spirit of life, tree of life, river of life? Yeah. So, so uh, is, is the river of life, is the river of life the same as the fountain of water of life? Where is the fountain of, the fountain of life? <laughs> you ask me the scripture? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but God was speaking to John in Revelation, he mentioned something. So are you yes, looking? Yeah. I will give I will give of the fountain of the water of life for you to drink of thirst. Okay, let's get the exact verse. Uh, Look at the chapter key. 21. Okay. Verse 6. Chapter 21, verse 6? Yes, sir. Uh, John, is it? Uh, Revelation verse. Revelation 21, verse 6. Ah,
Okay. Fountain gushing forth. Spring. From the Greek word pegay. And uh, from the idea of gushing. And uh, so it says uh, something that rushes uh, forward. So, where do you think that fountain is? I <laughs> know. Uh, <clears throat> because to me, it seems like it's referring to uh, some location, and that's not the river. That's what I thought initially. That okay. It is somewhere in New Jerusalem. Now, try to see where it is. It's connected to the river. No, no, no. Like, because I see it on the okay, I see I see the floor, I see the river flow, I see it on the right hand side. Uh, Around there is like a garden is type of thing. Yes. And that's the fountain. That <coughs> And it's still connected to the river of life. Flows from the river of life. Thank you, sir. So so in, in, in New Earth New Heaven, why is there no sea only river of life? Ah, because um, a sea is an indication of creation that is not complete. That's why in the book of Genesis chapter 1, you see during the fall of Satan and one third of the universe, it says there was chaos. So the only thing is a sea of glass in front of the Father. It's a huge sea of glass and it's calm. But seas usually represent things that are still in the process of completion. It's perfect, but still something to be completed. Which is why when it's complete, there are no more seas. You only see rivers. I could see, why could I see in Jerusalem? Because before, I saw it like three times, but I couldn't anymore. Even when I prayed to the heart, the father said, Lord, my father. That's the seven key. That was that was activated. <laughs> yes. Because I felt energy when you ask me, uh, what do you see? That's the seventh key. Mm. Because when you look at a cube, you cannot see New Jerusalem. Yes, sir. In the full sense. Yeah. Yeah. All the New Jerusalem is in the new earth, but it is in a different dimension. Yeah. Yes. Now that you say that there's seven layers of heaven, <coughs> where is the intermediate area at? In the lower first heaven. The lowest part of first heaven. Mm. Yeah. Is, is that where you say in your book that people are uh, sometimes even like in shock, shock? Shock or... Oh, that, that, one, that one is parallel to the earth. Mm. That one not even in first heaven. Mm. That one are earthbound spirits. The earth is... Uh, the earth has a parallel zone. Remember, underneath the earth is hell, correct? Right? Yeah. So anything above the earth is not just the natural world. Anything above of hell is the transition point between hell and heaven. Because heaven is above. First heaven starts somewhere above. So the earth is not in first heaven. The earth is between hell and and heaven. And this transition point is where the intermediate realm is. Is that Romans 2? Romans 2 category. So that's why there are also earthbound spirits. Uh, meaning they're saved? Or uh, they are not, I won't call them saved, I would say they are not condemned, but they have only a little light. And that little light, because of the mercy of God, didn't prevented them from going to hell. So for them, the angels are working to bring them into more light. And 
all of them eventually will transcend up to the first heaven, at least? No, they will transcend and remain in the old universe. But they won't be lost? No. They won't. They're slight. Yes. A little. A little light. Romans 2 category. Because in the twelve, it seems like the more you see light, it you like go like one level up. Yes. So correct. Because with the Lord took me, it was like in a place moving around. Then suddenly, like you see light. Then as I looked up and I saw the light, I was zoop. That's the key. Gone up again. Yes. Then as like the next one happens, these guys came. I don't know why, they, but these guys came. But they weren't like angels. <coughs> Look normal like any other person. Then they would like worship the Lord. They pick up their hand and they worship the Lord. Then like hit me to my core and then I like went down. That's like some what I what I thought it was was like okay that worship dimension produces something else that can help you keep you know to like accelerate. But it's not like ministry as in like grabbing someone and speaking to them and converting. It's like portals of light that appear that keep on. Yeah, and you minister to those in the lower spheres. Definitely. Yes. Is it like people who uh, die without getting a chance to hear the gospel that go to this area? Romans 2 category. Okay, that's the big one there. Uh, yes, they're in the in the media realm. And like little kids too go here? Like no, all, all children go to children's paradise. Okay. Yes. Like Muslims, like. Yeah, Doesn't matter. Muslims. If they're children before the age of accountability, they all go to children's paradise. Where would uh, children's paradise be at? Uh, children's paradise is part of the third heaven. Okay. Yes. Pastor, now, it was something like very interesting. Because I, I read your uh, book there as well, I went back to it and I, I checked it out. And then you spoke about inventions. So every time like, I went there, now I was like, hey, looking around to see how they're making stuff here. The place of inventions, where, like, where particularly is that? Is uh, the place of inventions? Uh, is more in the lower realm because the higher realm don't need to invent things everything operate by thoughts but the lower realms got transportation yeah. where they will get into vehicles that transport them because they don't have enough energy yeah. to travel by themselves yeah so, so that's where inventions are and because inventions are in the lower sphere sometimes the thoughts of the inventors inventions there reflect into the earth and people on the earth pick up inventions. Mm. All inventions of earth are picked up from the dimension of the spirit. Now Nothing you, is original. Was now to say that when these events, uh, events come, there was something that happened and I saw like a series of like numbers or something, things like that going on, like some type of like formula. Would that be would that be something like that? Yes, because they're still studying things. Okay. People like the Greek philosophers, yeah. Archimedes, uh, all these inventors, when they die, where do they go? Yeah. Is he good man, bad man, evil man, con man of conscience, who live in good conscience? Probably. Archimedes is a typical person of Romans 2 category. Now when he goes, because of his mind, he would want to go to the library and continue learning knowledge and invention. And there's a whole school of that. But the thing is, they don't realize there's no end. There's no end. And these are the lower spheres. Because of that, I had a dream. And this dream was about some type of rub. It's like if you rub it on, if you got like pains, etc., whatever the case may be, take it and like rub it on your body and it relieves the pain and at the time it was, it was so popular that nobody could get their hands on it and everybody was looking for it and at the same time there was those like series of like numbers of things that were rolling down but it was, it was way quite fast I couldn't like record it so based on that there's some way that an individual can go back into that slow it down and sort of pick up some stuff in they can except that they they work with laws that are parallel to this world. There's only one law. The laws of physics are shadow laws of the other law. So the same laws work up there, except they're higher. So they would manipulate the scientific laws up there with at a higher level. And here they manipulate the lower laws and the lower molecules which are parallel. So when they can duplicate what is there here, 
that's where you got successful invention, medicine, or discovery. Sir, uh, scientifically and spiritually, uh, the geographical locations down, but not to space, downward, where, where is that? Where <coughs> Into is the center of the earth. No, no, I, I, I mean, I mean this, like the stars are up there, you know the stars are up there, but in outer space when you go south, instead of going north, where do you go? Oh, you're talking about if there's a whole galaxy, Yes, sir. and based on the earth, north, south, yes, east, yes. west kind because of dimension. Most, you, you don't, don't hear about that, you only hear about going up. Okay, up. remember how the song says in the sides of the north, besides being in Jerusalem, and uh, that's uh, usually parallel to uh, the rough place where uh, the direction one would travel uh, to the geography of heaven yes, or the heavenly uh, pristine universe yes, and um, then there are also dimensions that go through different things which is why there's an angel standing in the middle of the sun in the book of revelations why is the angel standing in the middle of the sun because uh, all you know what you see the sun and the stars here where they're giving out light in the other dimension our suns are the black holes but the black holes in this dimension physically on the opposite side all the energy is going out so it's seen as the suns if you take a piece of paper and you poke holes on it and you put it behind the light and those holes represent <coughs> stars they look round and physical but all of them are actually dimensional spheres the energy is coming out although we explain it by nuclear fusion but something else is continue to burn and something else control the forces and that's because of uh, there are many layers of physical dimension the Lord, the Lord in Job 38 when he spoke to Job when he asked him a question where were you when the sea should fall from the matrix, from the womb, and when I, <coughs> so when I shut the doors and set its limit. Yeah. So are they uh, spiritual doors that actually keep They are spiritual limit? doors keeping every limit. Yes. Ooh. And those doors, sometimes Enoch describe them as mountains, mountains in the book of Enoch, yeah. but uh, they are dimension. Replace the word mountains with dimension. Doors with the word uh, dimensional gateways so let's say if you go through a black hole here in our universe where will you end up and how will you come on that side that's where all the energy flows out so on that side it looks like the Sun now isn't the Sun always giving out energy not taking it so on the other dimension is the black hole and when God create things, physical things have a parallel dimension. Like in physics, you will have what I call matter and antimatter. And that's how God creates something from nothing. So okay. on, on one side, you can have minus one million. This side must have plus one million. That was what I was going to ask. Um, that's like gradient from <coughs> zero. Yes. Kind of you so split the zero, minus one plus one. Plus or one. minus billion plus one billion. Either is still zero. zero. And both forces have to be manipulated in a way that create all of existence. So, so in God's dimension, in God's dimension, the zero side, is it a negative? No. God is completely outside the zero and the plus. The zero and the plus are in our dimension and they are merged together but invisible. They are parallel. It's just like right now, when you look at all human beings, you don't see the internal organs. But the internal organs are what make us who we are physically. So when you look at the universe, you don't see the internal organs of the universe. You don't know where the white uh, black holes lead to. You don't know where the energy of the sun is continuing. That's the other internal organs that is the engineering works of the universe. Only the angels can enter the area. What is that? The age of accountability, is it a set age or does it depend on the maturity? Oh, it depends on the maturity of the child. Mm -hmm. 
and the input into the child and the amount of light the child has. Mm. It varies, yes. So, you know, we're hearing a lot about dark matter. Yes. <coughs> Is that also um, part of that parallel where the yes. light is on? Correct. So, there is more energy that couldn't be explained. Yeah. Even do you know the spin of the universe? Mm -hmm. That is that. And uh, normally, the nearer you are to gravity, the faster it spins. So, since the center of all galaxies is an enormous black hole, and is energetic, causing things to whirl around, so society is saying, by logic, the nearer you are, the faster it speed. But then when you look at the spiral galaxies and all that, not very true. Because some in the spiral are spinning, are traveling faster than the middle or the section. So this is something is not the way normal science works. That's where dark matter comes in. There are things that are pushing energy and there's a lot of energy that could not be explained. So, uh <coughs> Why is that they, before you, 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 you reach heaven, the heaven realm, uh, heaven quarters, why is that there is a, there is a layer that's sort of like, uh, that's there? Because I remember one day... Uh, like an invisible layer cannot go through. Yes, yeah. Oh, but oh, it's, oh, it's like when, if, 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 if you from there, you belong there, you just pass through. But, but you don't belong there, you cannot cross. There you cannot cross. It's a false field. Because when I saw, when I, when I, because I was praying one day, the Lord just took me, took me up. But on this, on my left side, my, my, my right, no, it was right, sorry, sir. Uh, my guardian angel was holding me, going through a shock of light. But I noticed that as we went through, it was like the clouds and the confluence of energy going on there. It just opened up and it closed up. But I noticed that there were some, some things there that were flying and up, uh, Below the below the force field, they couldn't penetrate. They can the never cross. Yes, there are many force fields of different layers and dimension. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, my question is about things that um, um, a friend of mine wrote to me, and um, so she was in that for about two weeks. So when we were praying for her, I had a dream, and in this dream, it seemed like I was uh, I was standing. It's, it's, I received a uh, vision in my head. Her mom had passed about two years ago. So I saw her mom, and the first thing I heard was, um, why is she wearing like magician's clothes? Because it's wearing what clothes? Magician. She looked like a magician. Magician. Because she was wearing a purple robe. Was she born again? Born again? <laughs> yes, yes. She okay. Was. So it was a purple robe. So I thought, I noticed she was tasting, and then she was doing something like this. She was tasting. So um, when I went in that so like, was released, my friend told me that. Like all she could see when she was at the Chinatown Lair was her mom's face, and then she kept, she could only remember the prayers her mom's father. So, my question is um, about, like, because we were being dead and gone. So, oh, and then the purple. I actually didn't know purple was a favorite color. The daughter told me that purple was a favorite color. Um, so, my question is about things that have gone. What are the situations where they're allowed to connect with us? Uh, with permission from the father. Okay. And they need to grow to a certain level. And after a certain level, you know, when saints die and go home, they don't sit around on clubs and play harps for the rest of their life singing Amazing Grace. But after some time, they are allowed to also come with the angels to minister. To minister. Sadhu Sunna Singh in his book, um, Spiritual World, uh, he met saints and he met angels. So he was surprised that some of the saints came back with the angels to minister on them <coughs> as an angel. And then he inquired uh, what this saint's background was and the saint refused to let him know. But the saint just described that he was, uh, I think if I remember correctly, from the 17th, 17th or 18th century. And he came back to serve. And the saint refused to tell him who he was because he doesn't want him to check my history. Yeah, so they do and they allow to come back. So what you saw could be the mother was permitted by God the Father. However, you need permission from God. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, 
I know, but in the spirit she will come and minister. Because you can see in the spiritual realm and it actually happen in the natural realm also. Parallel. Yes. Yes. It depends on the level of rejection and the amount of gospel preached to them. Because there are some people who the gospel is not preached properly. And they don't really know what they are rejecting. Of course, if the gospel is preached fully and they reject, the penalty is greater than someone who has not heard the gospel. Wouldn't it be better to just like avoid certain people because like, if you feel like they're going to reject, like at least avoid uh, Because you feel that you're going to make them more condemned. Yeah. Like, Never. Because um, uh, we do need wisdom to tell people and preach the gospel in the fullness of time. The fact that even the Matthew 20 is a great commission to all, Acts 16 balances it, telling that some people in some areas are not ready. You must pray till they are ready, like Vitania and Messiah, before you can send missionaries there. And uh, so both working, we have to still be led by the Spirit to preach to people. However, if a person is hungry for God, God will bring the person to the gospel because it's an advantage to know Jesus earlier than later. And Cornelius is an example of that. If the gospel doesn't come to the person, God will bring people to the gospel because they love God. Yes. But we have angels searching with us as well as our guardian angels. Then when we are raptured and going to new heaven and millennium, what to the angels do they stay with us or are they reassigned? <coughs> the angels are with us only in this dispensation and uh, once we cross over into uh, the millennium and New Jerusalem the angels go back to their original role the angels have all and the spirit being all been seconded to help mankind because of man's fall everything that the angels are doing now for us should have been done by the human race if the human race had not fallen <coughs> So in the millennium and in New Jerusalem, there are still angels, but we see them in their original role. They come and interact with us, but not in the same way, because we have all grown. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Final last questions, and then we close. So, yes. Okay, you go. Yeah. <laughs> Mansion? Yeah, you, you <coughs> Mansions in heaven. Yeah, you saw that this is a house it was built. Bill. And uh, I remember hearing a story or reading a book about how our works provide the materials. And uh, it's like, okay, so does those who build wait for the material to be fully accomplished before adults they will be a little bit of I understand. It depends on the view of quantum time. Because those people who have those visions, they are seeing heavenly time equal to earthly time. So that's why they see, hey, the mansion not finished, and parallel to the work on earth. However, because all things are completed in God, and there is no past, present, future, so for God, all things are past. That means that even right now, New Jerusalem is already completed. Mm. And all mentions and all that is completed. So it depends from a person's viewpoint. Whether they are seeing the spiritual dimension from earth, or they actually travel there and see the spiritual dimension. Mm. However, all our mentions take on our character. Mm. So some parts of our works are imbued into the mentions character. and vice versa. That means our original predestination is formed into the mansions and then we are enhanced by adding the earthly earthly uh, lessons and experience. I'll see you later. Hey? I'll see you later. Oh, okay.
Praise the Lord. So we go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you, Father, for teaching us your word, establishing these healing schools, teaching us to grow in you so that we can understand the dimension of the Spirit. And most of all, that we may grow and love Jesus more. Bless each one of those online. Bless everyone here, Father, so that we come to know Jesus and love him with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Jesus, receive all the glory, worship, and honor, as always. In Jesus' name, amen.